Hey YouTube, this is Southern Prepper One. Every time I open the gun safe and I pull out this M1 Grand, um, I just think of the sacrifice that so many people made for this country uh, during World War II. This is a real weapon. Um, shoots a real, real cartridge. 30 odd six. This thing is made unbelievably strong. It was made during an age where people took really good pride in their work, but these were still mass produced to meet the demand that we had to fight in World War II. I think of this weapon, and I think of the people, the 18, 19, some 17, some lied to get in to serve their country. I, I don't really want to call them young men, but they were young men, they were boys that held this rifle, or maybe held a 45 Tommy gun, or they held an M1 carbine. And they were willing to get off of those landing ships as they got closer and closer to the beaches. The ramp would fall, and these guys would run to the beach. I think of the guys that I had in the military, the young kids. And then I think of the young kids now if you handed one of these kids this weapon, they would hold this and say, oh, that's too heavy. I can't hold that. If you put that in their shoulder and you made them fire it without a rubber butt plate, they'd probably fire one round and just drop the firearm on the ground. If you fall into that age group of, of your young man, I pray that your parents or grandparents or someone in your life taught you uh, a lot of things because kids today are not taught anything. It's sort of parents' faults too and grandparents' faults because what did we do? It's easier to put them in front of a TV. It's easier to give them a, some type of computer or computer game or tablet and ignore them. So they, they're experts on programming a phone, jumping on a tablet, a computer. They can do all kinds of things for you. They can play massive amounts of video games. The problem is our world is not a video game. You can't respawn. And what's coming, we are not ready for it. The generation that will have to face it, I'm in my 50s. I guarantee you I can outrun, outdo a lot of the 18, 19 year old kids th today. And I'm an old man and I've been injured and just tore up, but I could still do it. We are in terrible times and people don't realize that. The average American said, oh, World War III could never happen. We had World War I, we had World War II. World War III is right about to hit us. Do I know that for sure? No. But the American, uh, I say it's an empire, is fading. And when you fade, there's other people on the block that's going to challenge you. And we are going to be challenged. We're going to be challenged by Russia. We're going to be challenged by China. Uh, there's a lot of countries that don't like us, and rightfully so. Working for Uncle Sam, you get to see a lot of things that the average person does not see back in the States. It was the greatest honor that I could do was to serve my country. I served it with honor. I served it uh, as well as I could, could do. But still, looking back, I'm like, we're hollering at Russia for invading Ukraine for some decent reasons. No, I'm not a Russian supporter or a Ukrainian supporter. I'm a peace supporter. But what did we do throughout the whole world the last 25 years? Someone flew some planes into some towers and we went crazy. Oh, Iraq, Afghanistan, we destabilized Libya, uh, Syria, and the list goes on and on. But we have the gall to tell Russia, don't invade, you're bad. What do we do? What is coming is a storm, and we're not ready for it. We're not ready for it spiritually, morally, financially, militarily, economically. Manufacturism is not here. We will lose. World War III could turn into a nuclear conflict. I pray not. I pray for peace. Uh, I've been to war. 
Um, there's nothing good that comes out of war. Absolutely nothing. Both sides loses. The average guy like me and like your son and your nephew and your, your brother and maybe your sister, those are the people that lose. The big wigs up in Washington, they don't, they don't lose anything. They actually get richer because there's more money spent, uh, there's more contracts given out, and, and there's more chances of getting a kickback or, or getting money donated to your re-election. So we, the American people, lose. The people throughout the world have lost. I wish we used all that money and influence over the last 25 years to fix America and take care of America. But I wish we used just a portion of it to help other countries. So other countries would say, America cares. America is willing to help us do something. I would sure rather spend money to put wells in Africa and to do anything uh, than to drop bombs on people. Nothing good comes out of it. We are facing a decision soon. We need to be hollering. Democrats, Republicans, liberals, uh, conservatives, right wing, left wing, I don't care what you are. War is not the answer. We need to be sitting down every day. While we're sending more stuff over to Ukraine, we should be pushing as hard to get everyone to the table and say, hey, let's work this out. Because eventually they will go to the table. But after, when you get that far, everything's destroyed, lives are lost, lives are shattered, nothing's good going to come out of it. So, if you're a Republican, Democrat, left, right, I don't care who you are, we need to be working on, I don't even think we could influence our leadership. I don't think you could. Lindsey Graham's my senator. You're not going to change his mind. He's a warmonger. But I would love him to be on the front line or, or in the in the foxhole with me one time I could pick numerous occasions where he would probably uh, pass out from fear but he's willing to say no let's send more money let's send more guys Lindsey Graham have you ever been in a foxhole not with just a little bit of rounds coming over with you but mortar rounds landing next to you people getting hit people dying you have it so don't send young men to war Unless you're willing to go, or maybe send, if you had a relative, a son, a daughter, put them on the front lines and we'll see how many politicians will be like, let's send them more, let's send them fighters, F-16s. I have no faith in pol political leaders, absolutely none. I despise them all, left, right, center, I don't care. There's only a few men that really stand up and, and will say something, or ladies. I put my trust in God, that's for sure, 100%. After that, I put my trust in a plumber, in the electrician, in the guy that goes and fixes my car, in the lady that bakes a birthday cake and you pick it up at the bakery. I put my trust in the American people. No matter what color, no matter right or left or center, that's who we have to trust to stop the insanity. When you open this World War III can, you're never going to put the lid back on it. When it's open, it's open. It will evolve into maybe conventional, and eventually someone's going to start losing. And the temptation to use a small tactical nuclear weapon to give them a little bit of a heads, uh, head up or try to turn the tide after the first tactical nuke, there'll be more. Nuclear weapons are terrible. I, I, I wrote that little book for, it takes you an hour to read. I wish I never had to re write it. I wish we never even have to talk about it. But the threat is real. Um, and no one is stopping this train. As you can see from day one a year ago, we keep adding more and more and more. Before you know it, we're going to have F-16s over there. Um, we're going to have a lot more, and it's going to snowball into World War III, and you might say, Dave, you're crazy, man. No, no way we can do World War III. That's what people said about World War I and World War II. But if we don't stop this, millions upon millions upon millions of people could perish. Just the starvation alone. We are not ready for a war, I will assure you. The information I get from people that manufacture, I'm not even going to tell you what because they give me lots of good info. People that manufacturing 
armaments. Now these aren't the head honchos, these are the guys that put the things together. These are the guys that design it. You know what they're telling me? There's no way to make new stuff. We can't even get certain parts. We have to redesign things so we can find a part on the open market. It shouldn't be like that. We should be able to manufacture it in the United States. As a soldier, I, I can see what's coming. Even if we were in the right, the 18, 19, 20 year old kids are not ready for this. They're not going to be able to grab a weapon like this, jump off a perfectly good boat under heavy machine gun fire. I've been under heavy machine gun fire. It's not something that's fun. My fighting was not even close to what they did in World War II. Imagine in World War II where your buddy gets killed. Most of the time you couldn't send his body back. You know what you did? You buried him right there, covered him up, and you moved on. You didn't get a day of, hey, go, go back and relax, you, you lost your buddy. No. You buried him, you cleaned yourself off from the mud that you just dug into, you grabbed your rifle, and you went back to work. How many 18, 19 year old kids can do that today? And if you run into that, you're an 18 or 19 year old kid, I'm sorry if you're squared away. But your generation is not. Do we blame that generation or do we blame the generations before that that gave things to them too easily? Made it easy to be lazy. Prepare and prep. Put your trust in God because if you don't have your trust in God right now, you're going to be shaken to the core what's going to hit us. We have real enemies out there and we're not some invincible party. We're not some invincible force that just uttering the name, we're from the USA. It's going to make things fixed or better. We might not cease to exist as a country on the route we're going. Financially, we're going to collapse. Militarily, we could collapse. We don't even have a civil defense plan. Other countries are frantically improving their civil defense plan and you don't hear a word from politicians because they have their bunker ready they're going to bring their immediate family they're going to take care of their immediate family or they have a money to invest in building a bunker when the average joe the average hairdresser the plumber the, the minister at the church they don't have the money they don't have the means to protect themselves and politicians aren't saying anything trust in god but you better get with your local community, the people in your community, even if you don't believe everything they say. And we need to stop this war and put as much pressure on politicians. But you know what? They got their agenda. They're not going to listen to us. Thanks for watching.